Καλησπέρα σας. Χαίρομαι πολύ να είμαι εδώ στην Αθήνα, να σας μιλήσω για το τι, για το τι είναι μια καλή ζωή. Εδώ που ο Αριστοτέλης και οι άλλοι αρχαίοι φιλόσοφοι εξέτασαν αυτά τα θέματα πριν 2.400 χρόνια. I'm going to talk to you this evening about the ancient question of what a good life is, but with a modern twist, because our culture, our Western liberal democratic culture, has taken a wrong turn. It's too materialistic and hedonistic. This is bad for mental health. It's fueling a bigoted populism, and it's destroying our planet. It's bad on a personal level, on a political level, and on a planetary level. And I say this as a liberal and a Democrat. But I'm not just going to criticize. I'm going to say how we can do things better. We need to put meaning at the heart of our culture. Aristotle and the other ancient philosophers had an easier job. There was more certainty in their world. We live in the world after Nietzsche, the 19th century German philosopher who famously declared, God is dead and we have killed him. His point wasn't just that God doesn't exist, but that without God, all our values are up in the air. My twist on this is that we face a crisis of meaninglessness, and we have to recreate meaning without supernatural crutches. I've been thinking about the importance of meaning since I was a teenager, but I first developed a proper theory about this while fighting two political campaigns. The first was to stop Grexit, which I'm glad to say we won. The second was to stop Brexit, which I'm sad to say we lost. In my spare time, I wrote a philosophical thesis about meaningful lives. Now, I'm not going to go into the argument here, but I do want to tell you how I defined a meaningful life. It is being effectively engaged in what you care for and can see reason to care for. It combines passion, because we care about things, and reason, which guides us in a good direction. We need both elements, because somebody who pursues an evil purpose with passion, such as a Nazi concentration camp commander, would not, in my view, be leading a meaningful life. Humans are animals. We're all animals. Aristotle knew that long before Darwin. But we're special animals. Sure, we need food. We need sex. We need pleasure, like all animals. But we have higher needs, too. We need to make sense of our lives. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating a cookie-cutter approach. There is no such thing as the meaning of life. In the 1980s, there was a cult TV series called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. A vast supercomputer called Deep Thought was tasked with answering the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. It churned away for eons. And finally, 
it spat out the answer. 42. 42. There is no meaning set in the stars. There is no 42. We have to create meaning for ourselves. But there are common elements. Most of us get meaning by caring for people, for our friends, our family, our community, maybe even our nation, occasionally the whole planet. We also get meaning by achieving something with our lives, by creating things, by fighting for a noble cause. But our culture doesn't help people lead meaningful lives. It's too materialistic and hedonistic. It celebrates money and power. Now, don't get me wrong, I am not against, sorry, money and pleasure. They're good, but they're not good enough for a good life, not by a long shot. Just see where this has led us. The West is suffering an epidemic of mental illness. People are depressed, they're anxious, they're lonely, sometimes they're suicidal, despite being surrounded by more material wealth than at any time in history. Study after study shows that people in rich Western societies are no happier than they were a few decades ago. Sure, if you're really poor, it's hard to be happy, but once your basic needs are met, chasing more money and more pleasure doesn't do the trick. And some of the really richest people are miserable because they don't have to fight for their basic needs, they don't have challenge or purpose in their lives. The ancient Greeks, again, realized a long time ago that money doesn't make you happy. That's the point of the myth of King Midas. Midas wanted everything that he touched to turn to gold. And when the gods granted him his wish, he was delighted. He touched a table, it turned to gold. He touched a chair, it was gold. He touched a glass, it became a golden goblet. But then, he picked a rose. He couldn't smell it. He tried to eat a grape, but it was metal before he could swallow it. And when his darling daughter rushed to comfort him, he hugged her, and she was cold gold. The curse of Midas isn't surprising. A culture that celebrates money and pleasure above all other things sweeps aside our spiritual needs, our need to belong, our need for purpose, our need for meaning. We've got the wrong idea about happiness. We think it's all about feeling good. Aristotle had a better term, evdemonia. It's not just about feeling good, it's about doing good. It's active as well as passive. And as most of us know, if we're passively glued to a screen, we don't even feel good. My idea of meaningfulness has a lot in common with evdomania. It too is active. We pour our energy into things that we feel passionate about. But again, there's a twist. In our post-God world, we can take nothing for granted. Our culture isn't just destroying people's mental health. It's also damaging democracy. 
liberal Democrats celebrate freedom. They say people should be free to do whatever they want so long as they don't harm others. This is only half right. It's great to free people from oppression, from sexism, from racism, from Islamophobia, from homophobia. But massive socioeconomic change is leaving people bewildered and sometimes resentful. We've swept away the old, but we haven't created a new vision for a good life. We have created a selfish society. Now, this has been going on since the Industrial Revolution, but it's really gathered pace in the last few decades. Neoliberals boast that greed is good. And remember Britain's Margaret Thatcher? Hello. <laughs> I didn't know she sang that, but what she did say She is visiting us from up there, maybe. But what she did say is there is no such thing as society. And I can tell you tonight, we have a great society here. But this process has left a giant black hole where traditional culture and strong communities used to stand. And despite their many faults, they gave people a lot of meaning. It's not surprising that there has been a backlash. Bigoted populists have exploited people's bewilderment and resentment to whip up hatred against minorities, Muslims, and migrants. The big wave started with Brexit. There was a lot of complacency on our side. On the evening when the polls closed, the editor of a newspaper congratulated me on our campaign. I wasn't convinced, and then the results came in, and we'd lost. Since then, we've had Trump in the White House, Bolsonaro's victory in Brazil, Le Pen's near win in the French elections, not to mention Putin's continuing popularity. Democracy has been degenerating into demagogy, demagogy. And one of the main reasons is because democratic politicians think that all they need to do is fix the economy and everything will be fine. It's true that the economy hasn't been functioning since 2008 financial crisis, but it's false to think that all we need to do is fix it and everything will be ticking. So long as Democrats ignore people's need to belong, their need for purpose, and their need for meaning, they are fighting with one hand tied behind their backs. It gets even worse. Our culture isn't just damaging democracy and damaging mental health. It's destroying our planet. Every creature depends on its habitat. But we think we are above our environment, separate from it, and have the right to exploit it for our benefit and our benefit alone. So we rape the planet. We pollute the oceans with plastic. We spew toxic chemicals into the rivers, despite the fact that living in harmony with nature gives so much meaning to us. But worse of all, we are pumping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. The planet is frying. People don't have enough water. Crops are failing. Storms and floods are destroying people's homes. You saw it here in Greece last year with the wildfires in Evia. You saw it just now in India and Pakistan, where temperatures hit 45 degrees in April. But you ain't seen nothing yet. Unless we act fast, in coming decades, 
in their desperation to flee the heat, tens of millions of Africans and Asians will leave their homes and come to cooler countries, especially here in Europe. And this tsunami of migration will trigger an even worse populist backlash and even more persecution of minorities. We are destroying our home, all in the name of being rich. So how to stop this dystopia, this downward spiral of mental illness, bigoted populism, and de planetary destruction? Well, we need, to lo we need to do a lot of things, but perhaps the most important is to put meaningfulness at the center of our culture. We need a new Copernican revolution. Copernicus was the Renaissance polymath who taught us that the sun, not the earth, is at the center of the world. So the earth goes round the sun, not the sun round the earth. Similarly, we need to put life, not freedom, at the center of our world. Freedom needs to support life, not the other way around, because not all freedom are created equal. Some serve life and others don't. Let's not praise the freedom to be greedy, the freedom to be selfish, the freedom to rape the planet. Let's, free, let's praise the freedom to be generous, to care for others, and to live in harmony with nature. Above all, let's celebrate the freedom to live meaningful lives. Businesses, Businesses need to think about this. Do their goods and services help life flourish, or do they degrade it? Politicians need to think about it too. Do their policies help satisfy people's spiritual needs as well as their material ones? This needs to be at the heart of what we tell our children in schools. This needs to be what we tell our children, at the heart of what we tell them as parents. This needs to be the dreams that we share with our friends and our lovers. Ephharisto Pumakusate. As, as zisome tisoesmas nen menoima.